If you're just tuning in with us, it's Amy from space.com. We are watching the Inspiration4 crew as they make their way to orbit. So um, we can still barely see the rocket in the distance. The, ooh, those beautiful, that little tiny cloud at the bottom is um, some really cool atmospheric effects that you get when the first stage and the second stage um, separate. So the first stage will be making its way back to Earth and it'll flip around. And the second stage, the engines just lit. And so that's how you get that beautiful plume that we see what we're looking at. Um, the gases are actually illuminated by the sun below the horizon. So this is a super cool treat. Um, really, really amazing view. So what we're looking at right here is the um, Falcon 9 rocket. So when the first and second stages separate, it all depends on what time of the day the launch is. But right now we are getting treated to these epic, epic view. Um, like I said, if you're just joining us, this is Amy from space.com and we are here at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. I do apologize um, for a little bit of shaky cam going on, but the mosquitoes are really bad tonight. Um, but look at that launch. It's absolutely beautiful. The plume is amazing. Um, it's stunning. So from here, the first stage will make its way back to Earth and it will land on a drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean. So today's drone ship will be Just Read the Instructions. Um, it's one of three that SpaceX has in its fleet. So um, of course I Still Love You recently moved to the West Coast and it caught a different Falcon 9 on Monday night um, that launched a batch of Starlink satellites. So now it's Just Read the Instructions turn and um, the Inspiration4 booster, which previously lofted two different GPS satellites, is making its way back to Earth. So we are looking at some stunning views here of the rocket. It's just, it's still going. Now the crew will spend three days on orbit. Um, they will do a variety of medical related experiments, uh, gathering key data that will help researchers better understand what the microgravity does to the human body. So typically people who travel to space are astronauts. So they're usually in peak physical condition and that is not the case in the with this crew. Um, the medical officer, Haley Arsenault is the youngest American to fly in space. And she is also the first person to fly in space with a prosthesis. So she has a um, metal rod in her leg um, that is a result of her having pediatric bone cancer. So she now is a physician's assistant for St. Jude, which is the organization where she was treated as a child. So when Jared Isaacman came up with this project, he didn't want it to be just another billionaire traveling in space. So he wanted to give back and he wanted to raise not only money, but also awareness for St. Jude. And um, so this flight will be a fundraiser. There will be many items on board that will be auctioned off. Um, I believe some of those are already available online if people want to bid on them. Also, they will be auctioning some when they return. And there is a button on the SpaceX website for people to donate to St. Jude directly there if they would like.